Hey guys, uh, back at it again. Um, I have to talk kind of lightly in this video because it is 3 a.m. right now. Um, but I'm still up to, uh, par partially because I still have my jet lag. Anyways, in this in this part, we're going to be building the flask endpoints. And first of all, create a server file if you haven't done so. Um, a server folder, actually, uh, under the web ML translator main app. Now, okay, I don't know why I have this podcast thing, but... But here's what we're going to do. Okay. Now create a file called the, called app.py. App.py. This is going to be our Flask app. And this is where the model is going to be loaded. The neural translation is going to be predicted. It's going to be ran through the neural network. And this is where the endpoints are existing. Uh, so first of all, I have a lot of packages that imports. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste the stuff that we're going to be importing and I'll go over a few of them where they are. Um, so Flask of course is is the is the framework, right? So we can ignore these. Um, well, I guess I have to talk about Flask REST plus. Um, REST is, you know, a... a um, this right here is library for you to make API endpoints in, uh, in Flask relatively easy. Um, you can basically make models with the flask rest plus app um and then kind of make your uh kind of use class so we're going to be using classes to build the endpoints it's going to be uh you guys will understand when i when i show it um delete this didn't need this kira's the model load model because this model was trained in kira's so yeah you got to use the kira's models load model to uh, load it you need tensorflow because tensorflow is kira's back end um, yeah, uh, we can ignore the utils for now. Have not made that file. Okay, uh, have the rest. Uh, this flask, of course, we don't need right now, but we will need in a second. And I don't know why I have two TFs, but let me delete one of them. Okay, so first of all, here's how you make a flask app. You just do flask app equals to flask name. And then next, here's how you make a sort of the Flask app and turn it into like the API endpoints. You just use this thing right here from the Flask REST Plus and you do API. Um, I know. Uh, and then you can put in a few things. Uh, and the description maybe if you want, but you don't have to. Now, here's something called namespace. And what the namespace does is you can imagine it as kind of the proxy that we talked about earlier in the, in the one of the videos uh, in the front end. You can imagine it as a proxy. Um, you're gonna insert something here. Uh, like for ours, I'll just call it prediction or something like that. And then what this allows you to do is later you can just do um, in front of your, before your uh, main class, you can do add namespace dot uh, route that. And so by doing this, by doing this thing right here, whenever your front end makes an API call to prediction, to prediction, uh, it is going to be understood that we're going to go to namespace and then and then we go to wherever namespace routes to, uh, to determine when it's being ran. Um, it's, I, I think it's all gonna come together when we actually type finish the whole script. So just follow along, app model equals to app model. And I'm looking at my old code right now. Uh, and you can find this code uh, in the link, link link description below if you don't want to type all of this. I think I'll post it when I have time. Actually, let's just... Uh, just do false just in case I accidentally missed it. Okay. So it's not auto-compiling. Okay. Anyways. Uh, as I said earlier, we're going to do namespace.round. 
this and this is really just some URL design and the API backend design where where everything is gonna go um, you know you might want to you might have something like users right you I mean you might have an endpoint that is totally deal with users so that might start with users um, and you have another endpoint that's maybe like predictions and that will start with prediction and then individually for the prediction namespaces we're going to trigger whatever is under here um yeah well, whatever okay so just copy this part uh, resource okay Jason, um, we can print it in the form data, and this will show up in our console. Uh, I mean, in our, in our terminal, uh, and then we can send a response back to the frontend. This is an important part. Uh, earlier, we talked about you know how if you send, um, you know a after you do after you do a post. I mean, after you run the prediction, you want to send the results back to the frontend, and this is where you send it back. By doing response, it goes to JSON by um, status code 200, meaning that it is a success status. Uh, actually, just and then the result is going to be let's just send back whatever is sent to us. Um, yeah, and this is it for now. Um, I'm actually not seeing any errors uh, so. If I run this, it should work. I mean, it's not gonna work because I um, I planned something. I plan to not uh, change some code, but okay. So let me see. Uh, first of all, in the front end, we got to yeah. I forgot about in the front end. In the front end, we got to um, when I press click me to translate, we actually got to send um, the API request. And to do that, as I explained in the last video, we're gonna use fetch. And the endpoint is going to be. Um, let me actually just copy and paste it. And then um, you you can place some modifiers along with the fetch command. Uh, a, a few ones that you definitely need is headers. If you don't have this header thing right now, I believe that it will just not work. Uh, I don't know exactly why. Uh, so I should place a comma right here, and then the method is post And we and when it's post we got to send something along right so we are actually gonna put that in the body um, And then we're gonna do JSON dollar string file That is always good practice usually this dot state dot uh, English input and this English input, where is this from? It is from, um, it is whatever target value is in the input tag right here, um, because it is stored in this state. And let's actually just run this. I believe it should work. I mean, it's going to send the actual request, even though it might fail. Click me to translate. Oh, it actually worked, eh? What? I didn't expect this to work. Um, Wait, that is extremely surprising. Oh, well, that will, since that happened, I'm going to remove a lot of the disclaimers that I made in the beginning. I, I talked about how I'm going to use course, um, but now we don't. Course is just like an extra security layer, and sometimes when you're, when you're straight up call, calling a different origin from where you are right now, it, Cores is not going to accept your API calls, so you have to use another um, the Flask Cores library to explicitly say whatever whatever comes in we accept it, and that's going to allow you to communicate. But for some reason, um, it was able to send to the thing. I'm pretty confused why it does. 
uh, we can make some observance of wait oh it's right here um fetch is a promise based uh, syntax has promise based syntax that means you you have stuff like then you have stuff like um yeah you just have a lot of then and then chain commands so this right here is saying that after you fetch it uh then you might get some data and if, if there are stuff passed back we are going to um console to log the res oh that was weird okay um click again go back to console uh, as we can see right here uh, the response is indeed being returned and we're not seeing anything but remember the where is the thing first of all uh, there's just something we have to do you have to do the res.json and then dot do the dot then uh, json file res you know you can name it whatever you want i tend to name it long just so I have a clear idea especially when i'm doing tutorials right I have a clear idea of what's going on now it's JSON file. We can now um, also log this again, maybe. Yep. So at this point, we can see the result, the status, and the status code. Uh, so we can get the result by doing uh, JSON file res dot result. And at this point, I should be able to do something. Click me to change, and it's going to return. Um, why is it returning high? Did I make it high? Wait a second. That is kind of weird. Where is the high coming from? So no highs found. No highs found. Where is this coming from? Is it result that I should be printing? Seems like it is. Let me go back to what I was doing. I'm a little bit puzzled at this point. Um, I thought this was able to show. Oh, why is it high? Alright, I'm gonna cut the video and come back to you guys when I solve the problem. Hey guys, we're all good at this point again. Um, turns out. I think it's something, well, it changed a few things. First of all, I realized that I never returned a response. Um, second of all, I realized that um, I think I missed like the help, the help description or something that you must have. Uh, yeah, so check these. I think I made a few modifications. Um, yeah. So now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh. I still don't know why it was showing high. Uh, it was showing high. Maybe that was a place. Maybe that was a. Hmm. First of all, why is this not working either? Ah, it's in the console. But maybe maybe that was a that was a placeholder text. Ah, it's just failed loading. That's a little bit troublesome. Okay, so finally the error that I was talking about showed up, and I'm pretty happy about it. Or else that means, you know, maybe some deep problems exist. Uh, so talking about the course problem I had earlier, uh, I talked about earlier, I meant, uh, you know, you cannot fetch origin to another origin without meeting the course policy. And to bypass that, we're going to define our backend. To basically say, oh, uh, whatever can come in, can come in. And to do that, it's really simple, it's just this one line code. Now it works. Okay, that works. Uh, so, so now we know how to call something. So that was actually a lot of stuff that we just did. You can make any websites now, to be honest, right? Because any websites you need to do a front end and back end, and you just gotta make it a little bit more complex than this. You just gotta read a little bit more code about REST. Uh, Flask REST Plus, you might figure out other libraries might be a lot better than Flask REST Plus 
in order to make the backend because it might have more documentation or it's easier to deploy uh, whatever um but we got it right here so i'm going to see you guys in the next video where i will be where we will be actually implementing the the model and running the stuff and then returning to the front end so see you guys next